The electrical work was slowing down due to the depression. We got a day or two of work a week. Sometimes there were long spells when we had no work at all. In 1930, I decided to seek another kind of work. So I applied for a job in a garage on Boylston Street in Boston. Even though I had never worked in a garage before, there I met Norman Snow, a good mechanic from Woburn, and I learned a lot from him. I worked at the garage for several years. One of the customers was a gentleman named Mr. Cooper, who owned the Railroad Auto Service, a company that unloaded new automobiles that came in railroad boxcars. These new cars had to be serviced, warehoused, and delivered to the dealers. Mr. Cooper owned an air-cooled engine Franklin motor car. Whenever he brought it in for service, he would ask for Blondie, which was my nickname. He would not ask for anyone else to work on his car. Mr. Cooper knew I was an electrician, so one day he asked me if I would connect a motor generator set for changing batteries. I told him I'd do it after work. I went to the unloading platform and worked almost until midnight to finish the job. After that, Mr. Cooper asked me if I would like to work for him, taking charge of the unloading gang. I took the job and was able to get jobs on the unloading gang for a lot of my friends, as times were very tough. One of the boys was Alan Wessonen, a neighbor and friend, who later became my partner. On July 3, 1935, five of us went to Westfield, Mass, to pick up four Pontiac cars from a dealer who had failed. When we got back to Boston, I told Mr. Cooper that Alan and I were forming our own unloading company at the Boston and Main Railroad at the Leachmere Yards. He predicted that we would go to the poorhouse in two weeks. It sure was a terrible struggle to make it a go. On July 5th, we started to call on all the new car dealers in the greater Boston area. Mr. Patrick Mullaney, the vice president of the Boston and Maine Railroad, did not think much of our endeavors. They were then unloading about 500 carloads a year. We told them that if we were successful, whatever freight we brought in would give them the haul from Mechanicsville, New York, which was the longest route on the B&M. We canvassed the dealers the long, hot summer, getting home in the late afternoon each day, tired and wilted from the heat. Our first carload of cars came to Quincy on October 9, 1935. We had to unload in Quincy and drive the cars to Leechmere, to our base of operations. Little by little, we started to get more cars. We unloaded about 500 carloads the first year, a repeat of that B&M was doing. In 1936, we unloaded about 900 carloads, and in the third year, about 1,200 carloads. The fourth year, 1938, was a recession year, and the unloading dropped to about 700 carloads. I was about to give up, but my wife, Anna, urged me to try it for another year, even though on many a payday I would bring home only five or ten dollars. We always made sure that the five men who worked for us got paid. When we started in business, I borrowed $1,000 from my cousin Fred Headland, and Alan borrowed $1,000 from his father. In 1939, things started to get better, and the car unloadings started to improve. In 1941, we were doing between 5,000 and 6,000 car loads, and we were employing 35 men. With business good, in 1940, Ann and I purchased a five-room single-family house at 160 Suomi Road which we owned for 11 years. When my stepmother died in January 1941, father asked Anna and I to move in with him in the house he built in 1924 at 87 Suomi Road. We did and rented out our house for two years before selling it. In 1942, we had to stop operations at the unloading company as all car production was halted for the war as the auto factories had been converted to producing vehicles for the military.